Well, it's great to be back in Hull City Centre to preach the gospel on Saturday, the 19th of November 2022. Uh, I'm delighted to have two uh, Christian friends here, Susan and John, who've come all the way from the other half of Yorkshire, from Sheffield, to help with the work. And um, yeah, it's a cold day, it's, it's very windy. Um, quite a few people are about, only so many shopping days left to Christmas, I guess. But we're here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We prayed, we asked God for the forgiveness of our sins, we're asking for the outpouring of his Holy Spirit on us and upon those who hear. So, without further ado, um, Lord have mercy on me and help me, and we preach the gospel. Well, good afternoon. It's uh, wonderful to be able to preach this gospel, to stand up and say that Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world, to stand up and say that there is salvation in no other name, to stand up and say that whoever finds the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ finds that salvation which comes from God. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that Saviour of the world whom God sent, whom God gave. And he is alive today so that if we call on the name of Jesus Christ, if we seek him with all our hearts and we call on his name, then we receive the salvation that comes from God. Without Jesus Christ we are lost in our sins. God sees every one of us. He sees our sins. God sees us. He knows the secret things of our hearts. He knows who we are. He knows what we've done. He knows our thoughts. And God measures everything about us up against His Ten Commandments. Now the commandments, my friends, are God's commandments. They are pure. They are holy. Now, the first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I say that because very few people know what's in the commandments even though they very often quote that they will try and get to heaven by obeying the commandments. But if we don't know Jesus Christ, then we have other gods before the living God, the eternal God, the true God, the only God. There is only one God. There is only one God who created the heavens and the earth. People sometimes say that all religions lead to the same God. They do not. The gods of the nations are idols, the Bible says. God hates idolatry. There is such a thing as false religion. There is such a thing as fraudulent religion that doesn't save a man or a woman or a child. There is such a thing as lying religion. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ alone has paid the penalty for sin. Jesus Christ alone was the only one who could pay the penalty for sin. The Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross of Calvary, who loved sinners and laid down his life for sinners, so that we who are sinners might find the salvation of God through faith in him. Salvation from sin and from hell for everlasting life is by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. The Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, he is the one who died for sinners. He is the one who is alive today. He is the one who laid down his life so that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if we know Jesus Christ, we have that life which comes from God. If we know Jesus Christ, we have that eternal life. And God commands us, every one of us, that we should repent of our sins, of our idolatries, men worshipping the creature more than the creator. Now there are many people walking past today who have a lot of time for the World Cup about to take place in Qatar. Many people have time for that. But there are very few people who have time for their souls, who have time for God, who have time for the truth who have time for salvation. Now that's idolatry. If we have time for football, but we don't have time for God, then football has become our idol. It has become our sin. It has become our substitute for the true and living God. And I'm going to tell you this. There is no football in hell. None whatsoever. There is only a fiery, eternal torment and judgment. So if your life consists of watching football,
but nothing to do with God, then you are an idolater according to the Bible. Because an idol can be anything that takes us away from God. It might be something that's made out of wood or stone. If you go around houses in England, you see Buddhas on practically every wall or in every living room now. You might be forgiven for thinking that the people of England have become Buddhists. Well, Buddhism won't get you to heaven. It won't help you. It's an empty, vain, foolish, destructive philosophy that cannot do anything to help you, that can do nothing to reconcile you to God. Buddhism cannot save you. Buddhism cannot help you. Jesus Christ alone has the power to save. And the people of England need to turn back to God. We need to repent of our sins. We need to turn back from our idolatries, whether it be football or whatever it may be. But somebody will say, well, I don't idolise football, I hate football. And when the football's on the television, off you go shopping. There are many who idolise shopping. Shopping is your God. You go around the shops, you look at the shoes, you look at the clothes. And that's all there is to your life. But you see, we were created to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. So your shopping is your idolatry. Because that place in your heart, in your life, that belongs to God, you have filled with things, possessions, clothes and things like that. There are many who worship things. Some worship gadgets. Some worship gold. Some worship houses and lands, some worship cars. But the Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now God is serious when he says that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And we shall be turned into hell, we shall be cast into hell, body and soul, if we forget God. And the only way we can find God, the only way we can come to God, the only way we can return to God is through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is the only one who can deliver us. In order to be saved from our sins, we need a saviour. In order to be saved from our sins, we need a substitute. Our sins need to be paid for. And either they are paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, or we must pay for them in hell. And when you are paying for your sins in hell, you will never, ever, ever pay for your sins. One sin, one lie, one swear word, one curse, one lazy or foolish thought is enough to see us cast into hell fire for eternity. Now you see, you wouldn't be clapping if you felt the conviction of your sin that comes from God. You would be crying out to God for mercy. One sin is sufficient to see us cast into hell for eternity. But we are sinners by nature. We are guilty. We are together become corrupt, the Bible says. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all together become corrupt. We are sinners by nature. We are guilty before God. God to whom we must give an account. God before whom we must stand. Without Jesus Christ we cannot stand before the throne of Almighty God. Now, how pure do we need to be in order to go to heaven? Well, the answer is we need to be absolutely pure, utterly holy, utterly without spot or blemish. And not just the outward things that we do, but the things that we haven't done. And not just that, but the things and the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. God looks at the heart. God tries our thoughts. He tries our intents. He tries our motives. But to stand before God, we must be absolutely pure as though we had never sinned, so that God can find no fault with us. Now that should throw us into great concern of soul, because there is great fault with every one of us. We are sinners by nature. We are corrupt by nature. Our hearts are desperately deceitful 
desperately deceitful and desperately wicked. And we deceive ourselves and tell ourselves that if there is a God, we're good enough for Him. But we are not. And we deceive ourselves and say if there is a God, He is an under an obligation to save us. But God is under no obligation to save sinners. God is under an obligation to uphold His holiness, His glory, His righteousness. And God's glory and righteousness are upheld when He casts sinners, when He casts us into hell for our sins. There is a wrath to come. There is a judgment to come. There is a day appointed by God when He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom He has appointed, Jesus Christ. And you will say to me, I don't need God, I don't want God, or there is no God. The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Is that you? Is that what God says about you? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So many say that in these days. Do the maths. Join the dots. Why are we a nation under reproach? Why is inflation so high? Why are the other you know, prices of food going up like crazy and the size of food coming down so much at the same time? Why are we struggling to heat our homes? Why are we under the control of politicians who haven't been elected? By the people. And even if they were, and even if they were, they seem to take no account or no um, interest in the ordinary person, hence we have all the scandals over the lockdown. Well, my friends, these are just the beginnings of God's judgments against us for our sins. When we cast off the knowledge of God, when we reject God's Word, the Bible, when we walk away from Jesus Christ, we forsake our own mercies. And as a country, England, as a nation, I remember when the United Kingdom used to be called Great Britain. Maybe we should be called Yukish now or something like that instead of British. Who changed that? Well, I can tell you this, that when we walk away from God and when we walk away from Jesus Christ, we forsake our own mercies. The wrath of God is kindled from heaven against England, against Hull for our sins. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, the Bible tells us. And this is a city that is sowing to destruction. If you go to the book Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan, you read about a man who was fleeing the city of destruction. Well, for us today, Hull is the city of destruction. Because it is a city where the people have forsaken God. They have forsaken his laws. They have abandoned his commandments. They have put away from themselves the knowledge of Jesus Christ and turned to every unclean and unprofitable thing. So that the things that you do merely store up for you wrath against the day of God's wrath. There is a wrath to come. There is a judgment to come. And we need to repent of our sins. And we need to turn from our sins. And we need to believe on Jesus Christ, who is alive today. Because if we don't find Jesus Christ, we will never find the salvation of God. But if you know Jesus Christ in your heart, and you are trusting Jesus Christ alone and no one else, a lot of people in hell trusting Mary, Mary can't help you, Mary won't save you, Mary won't deliver you, Jesus will do all of those things. And he is lovely, he is all together lovely, and he is the saviour of those who put their trust in him. Well, I hope you know him, my friend. I hope you really do know him. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. Jesus Christ is the deliverer of all those who put their trust in him. Today, we dwell in the city of destruction, quite literally. Quite literally, somewhere in some nuclear bunker in Russia, there is a nuclear weapon targeted against Hull. You can be sure of that. But whether or not it ever comes against Hull isn't in Vladimir Putin's hands or anybody else's hands. It's in God's hands. And God is angry with us because of our sin. And we must repent and we must turn to Jesus Christ. 
Now, if Jesus Christ had not come into the world, there would be no hope for the world. Because you won't find hope anywhere else. You won't find it in Marxism. Marxism is atheistic and it is full of poisonous hatred and violence. Marxism is. Marxism won't help you. All it can do is tear down and destroy. And all those years of history of Marxist governments in the world should tell us that. Marxism is a great destroyer of the people. It helps no one. It kills multitudes. It tears down and destroys. But Jesus Christ, my friends, is the saviour of the world. And all the love and mercy of God is found in Jesus Christ. All the love and mercy of Almighty God is seen on that cross of Calvary. Is seen in the Lord Jesus Christ laying down his life for sinners, loving sinners, giving himself for sinners, dying in the place of sinners, bearing our sins in his own body on the tree, becoming a substitute for sinners, becoming a sacrifice for sinners. That's how I as a Christian can tell you that I know that my sins are forgiven. All my sins in their filth, in their corruption, in their wickedness. Now at heart, all sin is rebellion against Almighty God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God who reigns over the heavens and the earth. There is a God who, with whom we have to do. There is a God who sees every one of us. Now, I don't know the names of people walking past me today, but God knows everybody's names. He knows everything about every one of us. He knows every thought. He knows every word. He knows everything that we have done. He knows everything that we do. And it's not a pretty sight because of our sins. God's wrath is kindled against us because of our sexual immoralities and sexual sins in these days. And the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And that includes homosexuality and lesbianism and transgenderism, autogynophilia it's called. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. We are a city under the wrath of God. If we are without Jesus Christ, the wrath of God is kindled against us for our sins. We need deliverance. We need to flee from the wrath to come. We need to turn from our sins. Drunkenness, drug taking, lying, swearing, sexual immorality. We live in a generation full of the most vile sexual immorality, things which are against nature, things which are an abomination to Almighty God. And rather than being ashamed of these things, these things are promoted by governments, promoted in our councils and in our schools, things which are unprofitable. Homosexuality and lesbianism are described in the Bible as sin. And we need to repent for these things and turn to Jesus Christ. Because if you turn to Jesus Christ, he will give you life. Without Jesus Christ, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. You've been lied to. You know you've been lied to. I think, I think we've spoken before. But you have been lied to in your schools. You have been lied to by your teachers. You have been lied to by the government. You've been lied to on the internet. You've been lied to in your social media. But Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. And the Lord Jesus Christ will give you life if you turn from your sin and you believe on him. You see? You see? There is a God in heaven. If we are sinners, if we are sinners, if that means if we've broken God's laws, we are spiritually dead. And God says that we're dead. And we will go to hell. Hell is a real place. Hell is a place of eternal fiery torment. It's not a place you want to go. No, there is nothing in this world that is like hell. There is no suffering in this world. There is no, there is no, there is nothing in this world, no suffering, no trouble, no trial, no prison, no torture. There is no illness. There is nothing in this world that is anything like the terrifying fires of hell. And those fires, those... Then your father needs to repent of that sin and he needs to plead your forgiveness as well because that is an evil sin. And sadly, it happens to many people though. It's very, very grievous. And it's a sign that he is a sinner in his heart. But we're all sinners. He says he's Christian. 
Well, that, that, that adds to his sin, doesn't it? Because if he's a Christian, he shouldn't do those things, should he? You see, we should look... Well, Mormonism, Mormonism is not Christianity. Christianity is knowing Jesus Christ. Christianity is finding someone who is alive, who has the power to save me from my sin. Christianity is somebody who died on the cross of Calvary and whose blood was shed to cleanse me from my sin. And Christianity is somebody who not only died, but is alive today. Jesus Christ is alive today and he will give you life. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. Can there be an antichrist? Yes, the Antichrist is very near at hand. In fact, many people believe, many people believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. And actually, not every Christian believes that. But actually, I believe the Pope is the Antichrist. But there is one final manifestation of Antichrist that is yet to come, I believe. And that's spoken of greatly in the Bible. But the Antichrist is a loser, just like Satan is a loser. Jesus Christ crushed Satan's head. Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil. Jesus Christ laid down his life, and when he laid down his his life on the cross, he destroyed the last enemy. Do you know what the last enemy is? Okay, I'll tell you. The last enemy is death. The last enemy is death. Because you're going to die. You know you're going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. What's that? Can I still fight death? Can you fight death? Yes. You can fight death, but you won't succeed. You can fight can I, I, have watched, I have watched a lot of people die, and I can tell you they fought death and they didn't win. None of us wins. None of us wins against death. But Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of God. Jesus Christ is alive today. He is not dead. That means when we call on Jesus, he hears us. But where is Jesus today? What if he's dead? Jesus, Jesus isn't deaf. Jesus has perfect hearing, doesn't he? He's a perfect he? man in heaven, isn't he? As well as God. And where is Jesus today? Jesus is on the throne of heaven. Jesus reigns in heaven. He sees you. I, I don't know your name. Okay, I don't know anything about you, but God knows everything about you. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. And God says that you're a sinner. You're corrupt. He says that you deserve hell, and he will cast you into hell, because that's what you deserve. And you will be in hell... You You'll be in hell for eternity. You won't recognize your friends in hell, and you won't love your friends in hell because you'll all be in flaming fire. So that's what the Bible warns us. And we need to flee from the wrath to come, and we need to escape from those fires of hell. Hell is a real place. Jesus, nobody warned us more about hell than the Lord Jesus Christ did when he came into this world. Jesus warned us about hell. And he came, just let me finish my sentence, Jesus came into this world so that our sins would be forgiven, and only if God forgives our sins can we escape the fires of hell and there is no other way that God can forgive us for our sins sexual immorality or mocking the gospel that's a very terrible sin yeah. there is no other way that God can forgive us our sins than through the blood of Jesus Christ and that's why God sent Jesus and when Jesus came into the world he died for sinners like you and me I think she was first sorry yes. yeah, I was. what if Jesus was just a crazy guy well, Jesus wasn't just a crazy guy. Go and read the Bibles. Let me give you a gospel. Would you like a, a, gospel, a free gospel yes. of Mark? Okay. Share that with your friends. That's part Thank of the you. Bible. And you can read that and you can say, was this guy a crazy guy or was he God? Because he's God. Yes. So to be cleansed, you need the blood of Jesus. Isn't, it, isn't the blood of Jesus wine? So can't you just become an alcoholic and fix your problems? No. That, that, that's, the Catholic Church teaches that they can turn wine into the blood of Jesus Christ. That is poppycock. It's nonsense. It's blasphemous. Because the Bible says that Jesus made wine one sacrifice, it made one sacrifice once on the cross when he was crucified and when he died. That's what Jesus Christ did. Now, Jesus is seated on the throne of heaven today and no man, no man calling himself a priest has the power to change wine into blood. That's impossible. So the Catholic Church is wrong. Don't believe what the Pope tells you. The Pope is wrong. The Pope is it's the Antichrist. Does that mean you can't bless holy water then if they don't have the same power as Jesus? No such, no such, no such thing as holy water. I go straight to Jesus. I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. He hears my prayers. He answers my prayers. Yes. Okay, right. Um, any your question? Yes. Uh, I, something about Africa. That's all I heard. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. But I'm concerned with what's going on in Hull today. Okay. God's. Um, I've got one in my pocket. Thank you. That's right. Um, you, can, you can give them to them if you want. So, this is this is Susan. Hi. Sorry. So, question. Um, how do you put pain in hell if all your nerves are already dead? Right. The, uh, the answer to that is the Bible teaches us there is a resurrection of the dead, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting torment. So you will be resurrected bodily after death. You see, when we die, that's not the end of us. Our soul goes before God. And Jesus told us... There's no nerve endings. 
Uh, no, our, our, our soul is able to suffer torment. The Bible teaches that. Uh, I, I don't know how, but I know that it's true because that's what the Bible teaches. But, but there's a judgment. There's a judgment day coming. Jesus will be seated on the judgment throne, and He will say to you. Hey, your name isn't written in this book. He has a book of life. He says, your name isn't written in this book. Cast them into outer darkness. Cast them into the lake of fire. That's what Jesus says. So Jesus will either be your saviour to everlasting life. Jesus will either be your saviour to everlasting life now, or he will be your judge to everlasting torment in hell fire. And there is a resurrection of some to everlasting torment and some to everlasting life. And the only difference isn't whether you're good or evil. You see, we're all sinners. You've, you've told lies, I've told lies. You've stolen, I've stolen. You've sworn, I've sworn. I have not stolen. That is okay, okay, you have, and I'll tell you how you have in a second. But we are all sinners. We are all guilty before Almighty God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And when Jesus, no, I'm going to heaven because my sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. I know Jesus Christ. I've believed on him. I'm trusting what Jesus did on the cross to save me from my sins. His death is the forgiveness of my sins and his righteousness. Resurrection is the guarantee of my salvation. So, but since he died, why do we just get our sins taken away? Then, because he died because sins. the Bible says we have to believe. God says, God commands us to repent of our sin and come to Jesus Christ. So God has set before us this wonderful Saviour. All the love of God is seen in that cross of Calvary, is seen in that cross of Jesus Christ. All the love of God. And uh, I'm, I'm, imagining that the, I'm imagining that I'm pointing to the Lord Jesus, actually. I'm, I'm telling you about his crucifixion and saying when you see a man nailed to the cross, you see suffering like no one else has ever suffered. But you see all the love of God is displayed on that cross to sinners. <laughs> To, 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 wicked, to wicked men and wicked women. All that love of God is displayed. It's all there in Jesus Christ. So, going back to your question, if you turn your back on Jesus Christ, then you're walking away from the love of God. You're walking away from the mercy of God. You're forsaking your own mercies. You won't find that love anywhere else. You won't find that mercy anywhere else. And God's wrath remains upon you. You must come to Jesus Christ. You must repent of your sin. You must go to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because if you go anywhere else, you won't find the salvation of God. Now, we live in very wicked days. You can't change sex, by the way. It's not possible to change sex. It's not possible for a man to become a woman. It's not possible... It's basic biology in it, though. Basic biology tells you that a man can never become a woman. No, basic biology. If you actually listen in your lesson instead of listening to the bullshit Jesus spits, then yeah. And don't swear. That is a vile sin, and don't swear. Your throat is an open tube. You swore, okay. okay, so clearly you've been lied to in school. A man cannot become a woman. A woman can... lying to us then by learning basic biology instead of... Yeah, basic biology tells you that in every cell of your body you have XX chromosomes and I have XY chromosomes in my body. Those cannot be changed. Well, okay, okay. The, first of all, first of all, first of all, they didn't inherit those from their parents. Secondly, these are abnormalities. Thirdly, they can't breed. They are they are human beings created in the image of God. They are equal with uh, human beings. Uh, uh, they have a disability. But this is this is not a third sex, and, and by no means does that in any sense prove that a person can change sex. There is no scientific paper. There is. Uh, I've, I've spent many years at university studying these things. So there is no biology. There is no scientific paper anywhere in the world that says that a person has changed sex. There is no evidence. There is no evidence anywhere that no, no, there's no man has ever become a woman. No woman has ever become a man. But, you, but you're, you're, you're a woman and, and, and you, you are destroying your own rights. When, when women become, when women become, when women become uterus bearers or child bearers, but not, not mothers, then you take away from your own rights and your own dignity as women. And you support something which is fraudulent, false and a lie. If you've been taught that a person can change sex at school, your school has been lying to you for years. A person cannot change sex. Now the Bible says that God made us male and female in his image. You know what that means? It means two things. First of all, it means to be male or be female is something that God has made and that's very, very wonderful. But secondly, secondly, it means that God made us in his image, every one of us, whether we are male or female, and therefore we are accountable to God. You are not an animal evolved from the animals. You are a human being created in the image of God for his glory. But you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and you need the salvation of God. You need his salvation because if you die in your sins, 
If you die, evolution is nonsense. No, it's not. Though. Okay, okay. You've been told evolution is true, yeah. but if you go to the science, it's nonsense. There is no, there is no way, there is no way that any cell in all its complexity, with all its biological mechanisms, all its biochemical mechanisms, could ever evolve. Nobody has ever demonstrated that that could happen. Yes, they are. So in order to prove evolution, you would have to prove that. There is no evidence that any species has ever, uh, ever changed into another species. Yeah, that is, no, 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 that's, 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 that's absolutely impossible. Uh, Your question. I went to a Christian primary school and even they said evolution. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay, but the Bible tells us that God made the heavens and the earth, and at the end of the day, your choice is between an almighty God who made all things for his own glory, or something happening from nothing. And even if you look at the James Webb Telescope, which is a lot, you can look, look lots and lots of videos on YouTube about the James Webb Telescope, and they went and they said, we're going to prove the Big Bang, and now they're saying that the evidence they've got proves that the Big Bang didn't happen. And that means that all of those books you had in your primary school and everywhere else which had a nice picture of a little explosion then it all expanded out and everything like that all of those are fraudulent and false and wrong you've been lied to and the scientists have been lying to you all your lives yes okay is um doing certain drugs gonna send me to hell yes so, well, anything that isn't glorifying and honouring to God. You were created to glorify God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. When you take drugs and alter your mind, you... Are, you've dropped something there. Um, you are doing something... If, if you don't want it, please be kind enough to give it back and we'll give it to somebody else. So, the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, when we get drunk, we were, we were created to worship God with a sound mind. If you need drunkenness, or if you need drugs in your life, then that just shows you've got an empty life, doesn't it? Then God didn't create my life, so... I do love ketamine. God, God created you, you're right, but he commands you to repent. And he commands you to turn from your sin and believe on Jesus Christ to the saving of your soul. Yes. Should I not take my antidepressants and go back to Nikki's with them? I would not advise you to stop your antidepressants without the advice of your doctor. I okay. Bad. Why? I thought you said that the drug is bad. I and thought you were talking I thought you were talking about illegal drugs. Okay. Well, the difference is this. As a doctor, you can treat people for illnesses. I'm a doctor. I treat people. And um, those, drugs can, those drugs can help people. That's why I can say I've studied male and female for many, many years at university. And I know what it means. And I know you can't change sex. So, you... If your doctor has prescribed you drugs because you have been unwell, then I advise you to take the doctor's advice. That is legitimate. But if you are nipping down the pub for a spliff or something like that, that is sin. And that is no life at all. That is, that is running from life. That is foolishness and folly. Now, I have never taken illegal drugs, but I spent a lot of time in drunkenness before I became a Christian, and that was an empty existence. Drunkenness is foolishness. Drunkenness is folly. But you see, Jesus said that we love darkness rather than light. And what that means is that we're all hiding from God. You're hiding from God. Your sin in your heart causes you to run from God. And when you hear the gospel and when you hear that Jesus is the light of the world, and Jesus says that he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, you love the darkness rather than the light. And that's because you've got a sinful heart. Yes? Jesus drank wine, didn't he? Jesus drank wine, yes? Jesus got drank wine, but he didn't get drunk. Okay, Okay. so, so yeah, you can take a glass of wine without getting drunk, yes, yes. Just have it in moderation. Well, I, I don't drink myself, I prefer not to, but there's nothing in the Bible that says you can't take a small amount of alcohol. But Jesus came into the world to seek and to save sinners. And the trouble, the sad thing is this, many people in Hull here today, throughout my life I have seen so many people whose lives were destroyed by alcohol and that is a bitter tragedy when you see people whose lives are destroyed by alcohol and they, every single one of them started off as a moderate drinker every single one of them started off saying I will never become an alcoholic but these things destroy people hello yes we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ you need him my friend you need Jesus Christ without him you will die in your sins and when you die in your sins you will go to hell no, you see, you see, we, we, we have this, uh, an undying soul. You could die today. No, I hope you don't. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll find the salvation of God and you'll find life. And that applies, that applies to you as well. Find Jesus Christ and you'll find life. Read that gospel and ask God to give you understanding. I believe you. 
Lord, thank you for those um, four girls, five girls, and the others who stopped briefly. And Lord, I just pray that you'd have mercy upon them. And oh, Lord, that you'd save them from their sins. There's so much in darkness, Lord. Oh, Lord, they know that what's being said is true. But Lord, I pray that your spirit would take it home to their hearts and that they would find mercy and find your salvation and honor your name and give you the glory. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Oh, my dear friends, without Jesus we cannot be saved. There is a God in heaven. There is a God of heaven and earth. And he is a God with whom we have to do. There is a God who sent his Son into the world. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ will deliver you from the wrath to come. Jesus Christ will give you salvation. Jesus Christ alone, my friend. And if you don't find Jesus, you will die in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you will go to hell. You have an undying soul. You need the salvation that comes from God. Your sin will see you cast into hell. Turn from your sin, lies, swearing, sexual immorality and impurity, drunkenness, drug taking, and so on. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. And my dear friends, if we, <coughs> if we don't know Jesus, then God's wrath abides upon us. But if we turn from our sin, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will find the salvation that comes from Almighty God. Oh, my friends, there is only one Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn and believe that you might find the salvation of Almighty God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall have life. Amen. I'm going to preach again shortly, so I'm going to cut that one short now. 36 minutes, that's good enough.